The Lord is good. Somebody give him a hand this morning. <laughs> oh, God. Man, thank you guys so much for that and for leading us in worship this morning. We're so grateful for the time that you guys put into it. If you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and grab that or turn it on. I'm going to find the book of John, chapter 10. We're just going to go ahead and jump right into it this morning. Uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 10, as we continue to move along in the I Am statements of Jesus. This morning we're going to talk about I Am the Good Shepherd. John chapter 10. If you make it to the book of Jonah, just say that's close enough, Lord. <laughs> close enough. Started with a J. That's all that matters. John chapter 10. If you're there, say, I got it. Yeah. Go find verse 11, and then we're going to look at 14 and 15. said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Go to verse 14 and we'll look at 15. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Now if you've heard this story or maybe the parable of the 99, you've been told how dumb sheep are. Anybody that has spent any time in church culture or any type of church background, you've been told that you are sheep and that you are dumb. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And we've all heard that, right? The preacher gets up and he says, we're all sheep and we're all stupid. <laughs> I've heard it millions of times myself. Now, I'm not saying that they're right. I'm not saying that they're wrong. But we are not taking that approach today. Somebody said amen. amen. This passage is not necessarily about sheep being dumb. It's about the love of the shepherd. So what would you rather hear this morning? You're dumb and that's why you keep making mistakes? Or God still loves you despite that you keep making mistakes? Amen. I think I will go with the other because I know that I'm dumb. I don't need to be told I'm dumb. I don't need to be told of all the mistakes that I make every single day of my life. So I'm going to go with, I know that God loves me regardless of what I do wrong in my life. Amen. Now it's important to note that verse 9, Jesus says, I am the gate. Or if your translation might say, I am the door. So verse 9, he says, I am the gate. That was what the door was there for last week. But this is what I want you to take interest in. Within the same breath that he says, I am the gate, he also says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is the connecting link to the door. The good shepherd literally is the door. Somebody say literally. <laughs> the shepherd would sit in the doorway of the sheep pen to ensure that he would protect the coming and the going of the sheep. So when the, the good shepherd said, I am the door, he meant he was the door. He was the entrance way in. He was the exit out. He sat in the doorway to protect the sheep. And the shepherd would literally risk his life in order that the sheep were protected. Now, sheep are stubborn. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. <clears throat> Why are you so hesitant on that? <laughs> Sheep are defenseless. They have no natural instincts that they can use to protect themselves. Now I'm giving you a forewarning. There's a bad joke coming, okay? The only defense mechanism that a sheep has is this right here. Back off! <laughs> That was terrible. One. That was so bad. Like, I swear if one of y'all put that on Facebook and quote me, please do not tweet that one. We'll give you some more quotes you can tweet. <laughs> Men, don't do that to your wife this afternoon. That, that was bad. 
But they don't have horns to fight with. They don't have fangs that, that, that they can bite off an enemy. And they can't fly. So they're, they're kind of defenseless. They have no defensive tactics whatsoever. So they're just kind of stuck, just kind of wandering around without protection. And that's why sheep need a shepherd. Sheep need someone to look after them and to protect them. Sheep need a savior. Do you see any correlation here? And somebody said? Amen. You know, there's always that one person who says, I don't need nobody watching over me. Yes, you do. I don't care how tough you are, you still need a shepherd watching over you. I don't care what your last name is, you still need a shepherd watching over you. I don't care that you're all bad and all that, and where you come from, you still need a shepherd watching over you. I don't care if you're independent upon yourself. You need God. Amen. Point blank. Now, I'm glad that Jesus is called the good shepherd. And here's why. I don't want to be watched by a bad shepherd. <laughs> the good shepherd fulfills every thought that we have of guidance, support, and sacrifice. He watches over me. He guides me. He sustains me. And I've got to have that in my life. Now, I can't speak for you, but I've got to have Jesus guiding me because I know what I'm going to do if I ain't got Jesus guiding me. I know the mess I'm going to get in. I'm going to step all in it and get it over me if I don't have Jesus watching over me in my life. <laughs> now, there's a reason that the shepherd does the leading. Look at verses 3 and verse 4. Still in John chapter 10, this is where we're going to be, so, so don't think we're going somewhere else. Verse 3 and verse 4. And I would encourage you to underline a couple of phrases in those verses. Verse 3 says, The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and what? And leads them out. You should underline Leads them out or circle it or highlight it, whatever you want to do. <clears throat> Verse 4. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them. What is he doing? He, he's going on ahead of them. And what happens? His sheep follow him because they know his voice. So he, he's ahead of them. Now here's some of our problem. You don't want to be led in life. You want to be the one doing the leading. We want to be the one calling the shots in our lives. We want to be the one carrying around a big shepherd stick saying that we're it. We don't like having to follow. Why is it we don't like having to follow? Because we can't see what's ahead. And so we don't like that. We don't like having to follow the shepherd's lead because we can't really see what's going on. But here's the key about the shepherd doing the leading. Because when the shepherd is out front, he sees if danger is coming. So when danger comes, who's the first one that it gets to? Jesus. And see, a lot of our lives are falling apart this morning because we're doing the leading and not Jesus. And if we would follow that shepherd, we would know that, man, the shepherd's going to take on this battle before I ever get to it. The shepherd's going to win this thing before I even get up there. So I know that I'm following the shepherd and I'm protected. We've got to trust the leading of the shepherd. You know, church leaders are considered to be shepherds. See, the Pharisees knew this. Because what were the Pharisees? They were church leaders. And they were okay with, with this Jesus stuff for a little while. Because they were hanging around. And if you read kind of the backstory to John chapter 10, they were hanging around and, and they were kind of listening to Jesus teach. And, and it wasn't that Jesus said, hey man, I'm a shepherd. Because if he had just said, I'm a shepherd, they would have been good with that. They'd have been okay with Jesus just being a shepherd. Because... What happened when Nicodemus went to see Jesus? Nicodemus said, man, we know you're a great teacher. We know that you come from God. So there were actually some Pharisees who had done bought into this teaching of Jesus. And they knew that Jesus was technically a shepherd. But this is where it got haywire. When Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. Because in essence, what he was saying was, and this is the Logan version, all the rest of you suckers ain't no good. I'm the good shepherd. The sheep hear my voice. The sheep follow me. And what he was doing was not just insulting them, but he was calling them wolves. So this becomes just this major deal between Jesus and the Pharisees. Now, here's a lot of church people's problem. 
A lot of people don't just enjoy being the sheep and living under the love of the shepherd. You see, the shepherd has a lot of responsibility. The shepherd has responsibilities that you don't even know about. And see, our problem as sheep is that we don't mind complaining about the job of the shepherd, but we don't want to take the leading of the shepherd. We don't want the responsibility that the shepherd has. So before you complain, have you ever considered what it is that the shepherd does for you and how the shepherd leads and runs a screen for you and the shepherd is actually the first one to take on the wolf before problems ever come into your life? Have you ever considered that maybe the shepherd is going before God on your behalf to protect you and give you that umbrella of protection in your life? So the shepherd is there to protect you, to guide you so that you can enjoy peace in your life. Verse 3 again says he leads them out. Verse 4 says he's going ahead of them. See, there's more to the shepherd's job than we could ever wrap our minds around. And we are so guilty of complaining about the shepherd and we never realize what the shepherd does. Because this is what usually happens. The ones who complain about the shepherds are the first ones to scatter when problems happen. Didn't nobody amen that, did they? See, we don't mind complaining, but we don't want to fight the wolf when the wolf shows up. See, the shepherd stands and the shepherd fights for you. While the sheep run. Now, and that's okay. Because the, sheep ha or, or the shepherd has skills. And, and sheep want a shepherd that has skills. Like bow hunting skills. Nunchuck skills. <laughs> computer hacking skills. Y'all didn't know Napoleon Dynamite was going to be in here this morning, did you? <laughs> So sheep only want a shepherd that has skills. So the, so the sheep fights off the enemy to protect, or the shepherd fights off the enemy to protect the sheep. But the shepherd doesn't get mad because the shepherd understands. The shepherd loves the sheep. The shepherd will die for the sheep. Do you realize what Jesus has done for you today? Amen. Listen, I need a shepherd watching over me. I know. I know the bad decisions that I will make if I don't have Jesus guiding my life. If I'm not seeking after the Lord every day and I'm not getting on my face and I'm not praying and I'm not begging God to intervene in my situations, I know what will happen in my life. I, mean, I got to have Jesus. I can't speak for you. But I got to have Jesus in my life. I got to have Jesus leading me. And here's why. Because I have invented ways to sin. I'm the only one. Don't leave me up here by myself. Like, I would try to get myself in a situation. Like, on purpose. Like, who does that? And like, I would try. Like, man, I, oh, oh, boy, that looks good. I'm, I'm going to make that work. Yeah, that's a sin, Lord. But just turn your back for a little bit. I'm going to do it. And we'll work that out later. Like, I, I try to get myself in some bad stuff. And God has protected me so many times by how? Laying in the doorway of that situation to keep me from getting myself in something that is going to hurt me in the long run. Man, God has prevented so many things in my life. And I look back on it now, man, I'm so thankful. Amen. Now, ain't you glad you didn't marry that one sucker from high school? <laughs> you know you love him. Oh, girl, we're going to get married. We're going to have a bunch of children. Mm-hmm. That was the love of your life, man. You was writing all your big old heart on this picture in the annual. Yeah, I know. I know I did the same thing. Why I burned all mine. Don't know what I'm talking about this morning. You see, ain't you glad God protected you from that? Like, you was all heartbroken, crying and slinging snot. <laughs> thinking God was against you, but God was protecting you, man. God was leading the way. See, that's the job of the shepherd. See, the shepherd, the shepherd is out front. The shepherd is leading. And it's, that's just a funny situation, but it's true in most of our lives because you look back now, like, man, that's something crazy for real. But, <laughs> but God is like leading us in that, and God is protecting us, and God sees so far ahead of what we can see. And that's why I got to have Jesus leading me because, man, if I take the lead, man, I'm done with it. So, so God is leading us, and he sees like, yeah, Logan, that situation ain't going to work out too well. Why don't we check up right here? 
oh, well, come on, God, man, that, you know, that looks so good. Like, I can make that work. No, Logan, you know, we, we, we probably need to turn left here. Let's turn left. Because like, this ain't going to work out, Logan, so let's not do it. And we, we try to, to manufacture this. And we say, God, but God, I want this. God, I've been praying for this. And then we are like so crazy that we even throw scripture back up at God. But like, God, you said you give me the desires of my heart. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the desire of my heart for you. Amen. So there's so many ways like that, man, that God protects us. And God has protected us from so much stuff, man, only if you knew what God has protected you from. <laughs> Only if you can just think back sometimes of the situations that God has kept you out of, just so you can just say, thank you. Man, I look back on my life and I'm like, yep, right there. There. There was this one night I shouldn't have been driving, but I did. How I got home, I don't know. Who can testify to that? And God's got His hand on me. and You know what, man, I almost took this job. I'm glad I didn't, you know, little did I know that when I got fired that God was opening up another door over here for me. Amen. You know, I, I wanted that job. I loved that job. That's where I was going to retire from. But God had bigger plans for me and I didn't understand it. And I didn't know why I had to file bankruptcy. I didn't know why I had to do all this. And I had to do all that. But man, the shepherd is leading. And the shepherd is protecting. How many times has the good shepherd protected us from getting into some nasty stuff? Amen. You see, when you're living in God's pasture, you can live in His pasture, whether you're at church or at home, at work or at the ball fields with your kids, washing dishes and mowing the grass, because being in God's pasture is being at peace in life. So no matter what's going on in my life, I'm at peace and I can still find pasture because I'm walking with Jesus and Jesus is leading the way. Look at, go find verse 9. Verse 9 was what we looked at last week and, and we broke it down, but I just want to put a little emphasis on it this morning for you. Verse 9. He said, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out. And what? Find pasture. You see, most Christians think that God just tolerates them. You see, we view God's love as, as if, if, well, He's got an obligation to love us because He made a promise 2,000 years ago. No, God is not obligated to do anything for you. Amen. But He loves you. He will lead you. He will guide you. You know, God does not look at you and say, why are you so stupid? Oh, gosh. Oh, my me. Like three people got that. <laughs> I mean, look at you. You're always getting yourself into this mess and then you wonder why I call you sheep. Like God doesn't do that. There's nothing that you can do to kind of throw God off and like, well, I didn't see that one coming. Well, that's confusing. I thought there was a better person than that. No. Man, God loves you though. He doesn't just put up with you. He loves you. Like we just put up with our kids. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I'm going to catch it when I get home. <laughs> Listen, you cannot outsend the cross. You cannot outrun grace. And you cannot stray too far from the shepherd. Amen. There's you something to tweet right there. Mm -hmm. That's how much God loves you. And that's how much he wants to have a relationship with you. And that's how he wants to lead you in your life. You know, Jesus said, he said in, in the past, he said, I'm not the hired hand. He's like, do you understand this? I, I'm not somebody that you just pay to come hang out. I'm not the hired hand. I am the good shepherd because the hired hand will run away when trouble hits. But the good shepherd is there to lay down his life for you. Now go find verse 12. said the hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. Did you notice in that verse that it says the wolf scatters the flock? He does that because he knows there's strength in numbers. There's only one of him. See, that's why it's important that the sheep stick together and stay in the fold. Because if you get off to yourself, do I need to finish that sentence? You see, the more you're under attack, 
the more you need to go to church. The more depressed you get, the more you need to worship God. Amen. See, the enemy scatters so that he can destroy and pick us off one at a time. What happened to the good shepherd? What did he say? He said, I'll have 99 and went after one because one was in danger because he was by himself. But the 99, I can leave them there because they're safe because they're a whole together and there's a lot of them. Now, don't miss this because if you're out there by yourself today, It's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be honest with you. You're dead meat. Mm -hmm. Your good is gone. Isolation is the last step before destruction. Mm -hmm. Because what do we do? Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. Nobody is there for me. Life is not fair. Like Joyce Meyer said, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but don't you see what's happening you've isolated yourself from the fold you've isolated yourself from the shepherd and now the wolf has you right where he wants you so what do you do you begin to question God's love for you God doesn't love me if God loved me he wouldn't allow all this stuff to happen in my life <laughs> if God loved me why, why am I broke all the time if God loves me why is this going on why is that going on why can't my kids get right if God loves me yeah 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 but God loves you so much that he left 99 sheep to go after you. See, the hired hand said, I got 99 problems and you won't be one. Like nobody got that, did <laughs> That is so embarrassing. <laughs> y'all knew what I'm talking about, didn't you? Yeah, y'all knew, y'all knew. Y'all got my back all the time, don't you? <laughs> But the good shepherd, Jesus said, you know what? There's one out there in danger. So I'm leaving y'all here. I'm going over there. I'm going to find that one. See, some of our problem is, is that we've tasted the shepherd's love. And we think we're not worthy enough to have it. So what do we do? The first opportunity we get, we bolt because we feel like we're not worthy enough for God to love us. And sometimes God's love for us convicts us. But instead of running to the shepherd, we run away from the shepherd. And I don't know why we do that, but that's just human nature. Because we get under conviction and God is speaking to us and God's spirit is dealing with us. And instead of running to the source that is trying to call us back, we run away from that source. And now look at us. We become devoured by life because we got away from the one who cared about us. You know, other than John 3.16, Psalm 23 is probably the most famous passage in the Bible. Everybody knows Psalm 23. People that don't even go to church know Psalm 23. It's on every bulletin in every funeral home. Whether you pass away as a Christian or whether you pass away as a Christian, Psalm 23 is on the back of your thing when you die. So everybody knows Psalm 23. Y'all know what I'm talking about? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Everybody knows that. But here's my question to you. Yeah, you know the psalm. Good for you. But do you know the shepherd? Amen. Everybody knows the psalm. Everybody does. Even Coolio. <laughs> Everybody knows the song. But do you know the shepherd? You know, sometimes in life it's hard to hear God's voice. I'm confessing that to you. And here's a trick that I'm going to uh, confess to you that I have. And I know you have it, so I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to tell on yourself. But, but here's something I discovered that I can do in my life and what makes it hard to hear God's voice. Because when God speaks to me, and I don't like what he says to me. I've got this gift that I can, I can turn it off. I can tune God out. Now everybody else can do it too, but I'm not going to actually raise your hand. But I'm confessing that to you this morning. I have the gift of tuning God out. But let me tell you what happens every time I do it. Every single time I do it, and I say, no, nah, I'm going my own way. I'm doing my own thing, Lord. I know what's going on. I can handle this. I find myself in a mess. 
And you know what God's voice sounds like then? Charlie Brown's mama. You know what I'm talking about? But until I get back behind that shepherd and start following him, and it's just wah, 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 wah. I can tune God out just as well as anybody else. And people think, man, the preacher got a direct line with God. No more than you do. I just know how to tune him out. And then I get in something that I shouldn't have got into, and then I'm begging him to get me out of it. You ever done that? But see, here's the beautiful thing about all this. The shepherd is still there. He's standing at the door. He's waiting for you to come back and find pasture. And that's what makes him the good shepherd. He lays down his life for his sheep. That's what he's done for you. Jesus died for you to enjoy pasture. You know, life can be going crazy. Your world can be cra caving in. But you can still live at peace knowing that Jesus is your shepherd. And if you're following him, you will find pasture. Jesus said, we've seen it, Jesus said that you can come in and that you can go out and you can live in peace and you can enjoy pasture. He said that. So no matter where you're at this morning, no matter what's going on, you can always find peace in Jesus. I'm going to have our musicians come up. You can close your Bible. I've got one thought I want to share with you as they come and prepare. I'm going to ask you if you would to go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. We're not going to do nothing crazy and make you raise your hands and all that. But I just want to talk to you for a minute. But I want you to get in this place where it's just you and God while, while I talk to you. So just, just bow your head, close your eyes. Get in that place with God where, where you know it's just you and God right now. Tune everything else out. Everything else. Don't worry about what's going on at home. Don't worry about what's going on in life. Don't worry about what's going on in the person's life sitting beside you. Just get to where it's just you and God. We all need His guidance. A good shepherd knows each and every detail about his sheep. I want you to know this morning that you're somebody to Jesus. That you're somebody special. You're not the dumb sheep that you've been told your entire life. And I'm going to be honest with you, that's a preacher's fault. That's the church's fault. You are not dumb. I don't care what you've been told. Because you're special to Jesus. The shepherd loves you. His desire is to guide you so that you can enjoy the peace of his pasture. And who don't want that? Father, thank you so much for your leading, for your guiding. God, we are so unworthy and so undeserving. We get ourselves in some just some nasty mess sometimes. But the sound of that voice of that shepherd calling is just over that hill. We can hear it. And Father, the beautiful thing about this picture in this story of the sheep and the shepherd is that the closer we get to the shepherd, the more clear that voice becomes. Father, it's my desire this morning that everybody here can hear the voice of the shepherd. Father, speak to us right now in this moment.